Hi there! In this video we are going to discuss monitoring data drift on raw text data. The problem here is dealing with raw text data is not that straightforward compared to structured data, because when it comes to monitoring for data quality for structured data, we have quite enough of rules how to do that. For example, we can generate very well understanding on how good tabular data looks like. For example, some features should have particular distribution, some features should have particular statistics values like particular mean or max or range or mean value. Some categorical features should have some percentage for each category, so we really can derive a lot of rules for structured data. But when it comes to unstructured data, particularly for the raw text, it's quite hard to come up with such rules. So, what can we measure based on raw text data? Not a lot of things, right? And I would like to present to you two very nice strategies which really help to deal with raw text data. So, the first strategy to assess data quality and more data shifts is the main classifier. The idea is very interesting here. So, imagine you have a lot of text data and you can create some reference data set where you are sure that text looks exactly as you planned and your models and other data processing systems works well on top of those texts. And then you achieve new batch of raw text data. In this case, what you want to do is instead of calculating a lot of metrics based on raw text, you would rather compare your current batch of data with the reference text in order to figure out whether they are similar enough or not. Because if they are similar enough, then probably you have no issues with data quality or data shifts, right? But if they are quite different, then probably that's the good signal for digging deeper and figure out what is the source of the difference and what has happened with your text. So the idea is very beautiful, I would say. And how to do that? Luckily, we can build binary classification model, which will try to distinguish between the reference and the current data. And luckily, when it comes to text, we can even build an interpretable model, which is very nice for debugging. So the idea here is that, for example, we can use back of words representation for raw text and build the binary classification model using, for example, logistic regression. And if we use this algorithm, we can easily derive the most important, most strong features, the strongest one, to see what words contribute a lot for the model's performance. And we can also derive some good examples where our model is very confident in order to classify those objects as the reference or current. And if our model have very good performance, then the texts are quite different, right? Because model actually able to distinguish between the reference and the current. But if our model have a pure performance, then we are happy because model cannot really distinguish between reference and the current data. So the idea is very interesting. If we use this domain classification method to detect drift, we need to come up with some with drift score, right? And as a drift score, we can use area under the receiver operating curve for example. For a smaller data set, we can compare this metric with the quality for random classifier. We can use area under receiver operating curve as a drift score for large data sets, and in order to figure out whether this is a drift or not, we just need to compare this metric with the quality of the random classifier. And of course, you can use the other metric, no problem with that. I mean quality metric for estimating the quality for your domain classification model. So, if you build interpretable model, which I really recommend you to do, you can use some information about strongest features. For example, here we have an example of classification between the current and the reference dataset, and those datasets include data with different sentiment. How I can treat it? Basically, I can see the characteristic words, and in my current dataset, I can see the words like disappointed, returned, odd, sad. And in the reference dataset, I can see words like stunning, perfect, compliments, lovely. So that's the user's review to some clothes, right? This is why we have such words. And those words was derived, derived from the model. So that's the strongest feature our model used. And model used back of words features. Well, together with these features, I also have some examples where my model was super sure about the label. For example, for the current dataset, it's examples like nice top of a fabric, awkward fit, loaded on the model, but not for me, so not really nice, right? But for reference dataset, we have examples like 
super soft, comfy, love the room per cute and comfy, etc. So it's very good to come up with the hypothesis that probably the difference between the current and the reference data in our case is sentiment. It's not the problem with the language or it's not the problem with the topic, it's mostly sentiment. This is why it's so good to have raw text accessible. We have very nice tutorial related to detecting drift in the text data, so if you are deeply interested in this topic, I do recommend you to take a look at the code example and the text as well. So the next strategy I would like to mention here is topic modeling. It's somewhat similar to domain classification, so we do build external model to judge our text, but instead of binary classification here, we build a clustering model, so we solve unsupervised learning problem. The idea is pretty interesting. So, if you have our reference data, we can build the interpretable topic clusters. So, apply clustering algorithm in order to split our data into some clusters. Each cluster should represent a specific topic. It actually looks very nice, but practically it's quite hard task to build a really nice clustering model. Why so? because the clustering problem statement is not correct from the math point of view, which means there is no like ideal structure of your data, right? There is no right answer. So you need to tune this clustering model quite a lot and invest quite a lot of resources into building interpretable clusters. But as soon as you did it, you can actually apply this clustering model to new batches of data and check the sizes for different topics. So you can basically try, try to track the share of different topics and see whether you have some changes. For example, some topics can unexpectedly become very popular, some vice versa, right? And by doing this tracking of shares for different topics, you can perform the monitoring and see whether you have some changes in the topics of your text data. So actually we can quite expand this idea to extracting different signals from text data, not only the topics, but many, many more in order to perform text drift detection. Let's discuss this in the new video.